Hi, it's me. I'm the cast Iron Man. Uh, welcome again to this installment, which will be white wine and shallot rolls, burger rolls, chicken sandwich rolls, uh, bologna and cheese rolls, just a roll with butter, coffee in the morning. And if you don't know what that's about, then it can't really help you because it's here we eat buttered rolls with coffee in the morning. Everybody does. What you're going to want to do is start with about two tablespoons of butter in a pan, preferably a cast iron one, which is well seasoned. It will work the best for caramelization of onions and shallots. Make sure that's melted over medium high heat, and then you're going to put four or five shallots in, or really as much as you want, you know, if you want to multiply the recipe, and begin to saute those down. Uh, there's a there's certain ways to do this. You do have to add liquid at certain points. You don't want to put too much liquid in and dilute the taste. But what we're going to do is we're going to use some wine. And at a certain point, if it's creating too much of a fond on the bottom, we could introduce some water. I always add sugar into my onions and shallots if they're going to be caramelized just to help with the process and obviously to bring a little bit of sweetness to the party. White wine hits the pan after you've got a little bit of color on the shallots and just continue to stir that in. And as it evaporates, if you are noticing it is getting stuck or if it is browning too fast, you can put some water in to prolong the process and you're going to get a nice product when it is all done. So scoop them out and put them in a side dish and let them cool because we are going to need to mix them with our bread and you don't want them to be hot when that occurs because we want our dough to be a certain temperature when it's rising. Clean up too. Wipe down your uh, wipe down your burner. So here we go. We got our butter weighed out. We're going to put that on the stove top and begin melting it down. And while we are melting it down, we're going to put our milk in another saucepan with our water. And then we're going to put the sugar in here as well because uh, you sometimes people say put the sugar in the flour and mix it, you know, mix it then. I really don't think this matters too much, so if uh just just put it in just put it in the damn pot and melt it all together it's what i do with the honey i put the honey in and then the whole honey yeast mixture and the sugar mixture comes together it it creates the product it creates is great it's fine once your butter's melted dump your butter into the other liquids and sugar and then bring that to around 95 degrees fahrenheit put that in a, a vessel of some sort and then dump your yeast over top Whisk that together with a fork or your your thumb, um, and just let it. Make sure you know it's 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 okay. Make sure it's proved. It's not really use commercial yeast like that. It's, it's you're rarely going to have it be dead on arrival. Start up your flour, which is in your bowl, and then dump in your liquid mixture. Once it gets going a little bit, put in your eggs, and then your shallots, which have been cooled to room temperature. Those can go in as well where did i put the salt in hmm did i put the salt in at any point oh my god oh there it is yes that was actually a sincere concern i was just having in, in real time scrape it if you scrape it if you got it if you are going to need by hand you don't have to worry about that if you got a 600 hundred dollar mixer then you're going to have to worry about that kind of weird the way that works right this is going to mix for maybe 10 minutes or so until it is it's, I'm not going to say it's smooth because it's a, it's a pretty wet dough. All my dough is wet. You know, I don't want to put too much flour in. It's just the humidity content of the air. Humidity content of the air, humidity presence of the air. Pull it off your dough mixer once it has gone for about 10 minutes. Got some gluten structure here. Obsess over the amount stuck to the dough hook and then put it out onto your work surface where you can bring it together into a ball, just like we do all those other times together, my friends. And we bring it together into a nice, lovely round ball. And we can put it in a greased, a well-greased bowl and let it rise at room temperature for about an hour, depending on, uh, you know, you live in a drafty house right now. You know, where are you? Tuck to yuck tuck? I don't think so. You probably are in a really hot place, so it should rise in about an hour. Hour's gone. Now we're gonna portion these out. I did these a little big this time. Usually I do like 120 gram balls, and that's kind of like a, a nice 
size, like a, not like a, a gargantuan portion for a burger or, or a chicken sandwich. So these I did like 140 because I want a little room to fit the chicken breast on. I believe that worked well. So, you know, uh, hone it into what, what you think is appropriate. Same technique as always, whether it's pizza or uh, the, the pre-stage to a hot dog roll. Just pinch it on the bottom, bring it together, round and round, roll it, get some surface tension, and you'll have a nice little ball that's going to rise into a little uh, grown-up bun that will go in a hot oven, and the yeast will try to escape, and it will die in an inferno. That's what happens. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, guys. Yeast is a living thing, and you're putting it in there, and it's it's trying to escape. That's what creates the rise, okay? But, you know, you got to eat. People got to eat here. This is bread. Cover those. Let them come up to a puff. Let them rise. Let them double in volume. See how nice and big they are? Oh, my God. Egg sandwich on there? Wow. 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 Crack an egg in a little tiny bowl dash of milk and oh by the way use two percent for just for the bun recipe but you can use whatever if you want to use a whole milk or try some heavy cream in there to bulk it up so just create an egg wash and brush it all the top if i could go back in time i would make sure that i brushed the down onto the very sides of this usually i let it leak all along and it, it's it's fine but I, I would have been a little bit more attentive to detail but since i'm a uh, what a, not a space cadet is inappropriate, but I'm uh, an airhead. I'm idiotic, and I was in a rush for no reason. I'm always rushing for for absolutely no reason. Put it, either everything seeds on sesame seeds or poppy seeds. This is your choice. You can do whatever you want on top of there. It does not matter, right? Just like everything else in this world, in this damned world, doesn't matter what you put on these damn buns. But just make sure if uh, somebody has a seed allergy, well, you wouldn't even <laughs> you wouldn't even cook it in the same sheet pan. But my dad, he doesn't want to have seeds on the bun, so there's his bun in the back left. And enjoy. Put a burger on it. Put a chicken sandwich on it. Egg sandwich. Bacon, egg and cheese. Sausage, egg and cheese. And I'll see you guys soon. I love you. Bye bye. <laughs>